We can now bring in our health editor, uh, Julia Seeger. Julia, good afternoon. Talk us through how our bodies adapt uh, to a heat wave. Well, when the temperature of our bodies exceeds 37 degrees Celsius, it's going to do everything it can to revert back to that same temperature. And to do so, it's going to use what we call thermoregulating mechanisms. So first of all, your body is going to sweat, of course. That's going to evaporate, and that's how you actually cool down your body. Then the uh, blood vessels located on the skin's surface are going to dilate, and that's how you actually cool down your bloodstream. Now, for your body to be able to do that, it needs indeed to be hydrated to be able to produce that sweat. And you also need to be in an area that is ventilated, where the air, the, uh, the, um, the air is circulating, and the reason why is because it facilitates sweat evaporation. If sweat evaporation doesn't happen, then your body temperature rises, and then you can be prone to heat strokes. Heat strokes are a very dangerous indeed because they can damage the brain, heart, kidneys, but also muscles, and they can lead to death. Now, our thermal regulation mechanism can be overwhelmed and complications, of course, can occur. What are the signs we should be looking out for? Indeed, there are certain symptoms that can indicate that you are facing complications related to heat. And those symptoms are headaches and sometimes very violent headaches, muscle pains, but also uh, dehydration, dry skin, dry mouth. Uh, there can also be sunken and, and dark circled eyes that can, that's, can, that, that can also be a symptom. Uh, but it's important to understand that simple measures can actually prevent getting to that state, to that point, right? The first thing you're going to want to do is try to stay in cool places. It can be inside or outside. You really try to try to find a cool place to stay. Hydrate yourself, as I said. Try to eat uh, fresh food. Dampen uh, your, your body throughout the day with water. That's also important. Close mm -hmm. your blinds. Uh, avoid alcohol if you can, at least during uh, that time of the, of the heat wave for those couple of days and coffee as well. And in, if, of course, if you feel any discomfort, you need to call emergency services. Services. And it's uh, often said that uh, the elderly and uh, children are at higher risk. Why is that? It's true. We often hear that, but very few people actually know why. The reason why is because until the age of four, children's bodies contain proportionally more water, but they also... Uh, lose much more water through uh, exhaled, uh, exhaled air and skin. So for instance, in newborns, they're going to lose and renew 25% of all the water they have in their body compared to 6% in adults. So that's why they're much more prone to dehydration. For elderly individuals, what happens is with age, uh, they tend to perceive heat less effectively, but also their sensation of thirst uh, tends to decrease and their capacity to sweat as well. So that is indeed a problem. Now, we hear a lot about daytime temperatures, but not as much nighttime temperatures, but they are as important, if not more so. To sleep, exactly. Right. The reason why they're important is because during that heat wave, so the temperatures are high during nighttime and daytime, and what happens if the temperature doesn't drop during the night, then it doesn't allow people to actually recover from daytime time heat and that means that the heat stress is going to continue and that is when you're the most prone to building up that heat and going to a, to a, a heat stroke. Now many people, more people actually die of heat than any other climate hazard throughout the world and people who are living in cities are much more uh, at risk of course than those living in the countryside. Now if you're at the beach you should be cautious about that heat shock response right? Why is right. That? It happens when a significant, there's a significant difference between the temperature in the air and in the water, and that creates a heat shock in your body, right? It doesn't recognize, so it, it causes usually fainting, and sometimes, of course, it leads to drowning, which is a, a huge problem. Now, the first sign of heat stroke is severe headache, once again, dizziness, but also nausea, confusion. So it's really essential to keep an eye on the loved one, the, your loved ones if they're uh, in the water during a, a heat wave. And, of course, uh, all of this information can be very stressful, of course, but do try to also enjoy yourself. Thank you very much for that, Julia. Julia Thank you, Delano.